What up? Ben walks into JJ Bean as a child, orders a scone, baked good, doesn't get it heated up, and leaves a man realizing that, oh, baked goods are made to be heated up. I gotta heat it up at the office. Once again, welcome back to the series on how to be a man with Jay Gordon McInnes. Ready? That's an ongoing series due to your stubbornness of the fact. An ongoing, so. an ongoing changing series which makes zero sense. Try to help your wife. That's all it is. Okay, I'm not even gonna comment on that. Welcome back everybody to this week's Sharp Stories. We've got a, no, I don't wanna say, uh, it's pretty, uh, it's not live, but like a real time update for you. If you haven't already seen the Bank of Canada's update, or any news outlet in between. Everyone has social media, they've all seen 500,000 realtor posts about what we're about to talk about. Okay, well, just in case the interest rate has been hiked 0.50 basis points. So today, we are gonna go into a little bit of, I wanted to go into the anatomy, if you will, of uh, what a mortgage not is, but like how it comes together. Of course, we see a lot of talk recently, inflation, blah, 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 uh, rate hikes, blah, 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 CPI, blah, blah, blah. It's all these kind of economic words, we'll say, that have been thrown into the mainstream uh, a lot lately. So we just kind of kind of want to break that down okay. and kind of run through what they mean and why we care and how those numbers are used and why they matter. Do you want to say anything or do you want me to dive into this first? Go for it, you're in a row. Okay, so um, the Bank of Canada, as Ben just said, just raised 0.5. Uh, it was widely assumed that was gonna be 0.75, so it's interesting to see that they went lower, and I could tell a different story, but we're not gonna focus on that right now. So today, the Bank of Canada, what they call the overnight rate, mm -hmm. is 3.75. Just for some perspective, uh, this was 0 0.25 until March 2nd as, as the uh, pandemic lows. So we remember, uh, Tiff Macklem, who's at the head of the Bank of Canada, saying, borrow money, it's gonna be cheap for a long time, trust us. Well, these matches say you're lying. Blah, blah, blah. So obviously that was back in the uh, pandemic lows and then March 2nd, that was doubled to 0 0.50 and has, I think it's been, I just did a, another post, 283 days, we've jumped from 0.25 to 3.75 uh, for this overnight rate. So basically that is the rate that the Bank of Canada lends money to the bank at. So that's what it costs the bank to get the money that they are lending. Short term. To you. Yeah, short, short run debt, but yeah, it filters down into us. So that's, they've actually done six rate hikes in the space of just under eight months. So 283 days. That's one of, if not the fastest rate hike, um, fastest series of rate hikes that we've had, which is what I think the challenge is. When it's spread over, say like a, maybe a year and a half, two, two and a half years, you acclimatize and you adjust and it, it's much more manageable. But the issue be, being when it's so often, so fast. Yeah, so back in the, in 80, 81, when rates went up to as high as to 21%, that was, I believe, the competing uh, increase framework that we're uh, comparing to as the fastest climb. Um, I don't know. 81? Yeah. Dare I say before your time? Or? March 19th, 1981, I was presented to the world. Don't. Into this world. Presented. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're competing with. Anyway, um, the, the second, if not the first fastest increase we've seen in the, in the history of this beautiful country we have here. Anyway, so let's move on. So that is what we're seeing. That's what we're hearing this Tiff Nat Macklem name, um, Bank of Canada, the increases. Um, so basically, they're, as you all know, I'm sure by now, we're, they're trying to use this as the main tool to fight inflation, which is kind of working, um, but I don't think as fast as they were hoping. Um, and that's a whole other different metric, which we'll lightly touch on after this as well. Um, so anyway, they lend that to the bank. The bank then creates what's called a prime rate after layering their uh, profit layer on top of this 
newly borrowed money. So right now, prime rates post uh, this morning's increase are sitting between 5.45 and 5.95 uh, percent interest. So that's your mortgage prime rate that most banks and lenders, mortgage brokers and all that sort of stuff, uh, will be lending money to you out at. Do you have a caveat on that before I move on? No, so... The Don't look at my notes. Don't caveat off of my notes. <laughs> no, I couldn't read your notes even if I tried to. The prime rate and the overnight rate are two different things. So that's why a lot of the times you'll see like the overnight lending rate has been increased and it's a different amount than the prime rate. People get them confused. And then when banks say, we'll give 0.5% off of the prime rate, that's they mean 0.5% off of the prime rate, not off of the overnight lending rate. Yeah, so a lot of name changes here. That money is first referenced as the overnight rate and the prime rate now. Um, and you're getting, you go past the bank and you see 0.45% mortgage. That's the posted prime rate that they're gonna have. And then from there to Ben's point, um, specifically on variable, you can get discounts off of these posted prime rates. So for example, right now, discounts between the big banks again, including, uh, uh, other lenders outside of the big bank. Discounts ranging from uh, 0.25 to 0.50 for uh, the big banks and then as high as 0.90 right now for the uh, for other institutions. And then for the five-year fixed rate, right now you're looking at 475 to basically as high as 549. 499 to 5.49 as the big banks and then the high fours for the um, for the other lenders. So. Um, that then turns into your contract rate, so the name is changing again. So that is saying, okay, I'm getting a five-year fixed mortgage, let's say, at uh, 5.45 on an average number there. And on to before I move to the next thing, do you have any caveats on that you'd like to bring? No? Okay. From there, you then have to stress test, as we remember coming in a few years ago. So from that point, they're adding 2% on top again, not that you have to pay, but what you have to qualify for to actually get the money. So to get their 5.45% five-year fixed rate, you need to qualify at 7.45%. They're gonna take your debt servicing, your income, your debt, your saved money and all that equation that the mortgage brokers do. They're gonna work it into 7.45, what can you borrow? A million bucks. Okay, great. You can borrow a million bucks at the 545. Yeah, a couple of things I'll, I'll breach on here. I remember a video that we did in the West End, and I called it and I said, soon we'll be looking at stress testing at rates close to 7, 8%, and with further raises probably coming closer to 10%. I hate to say I told you so and I'm right, but you know, I say it lovingly, I told you so and I'm right. But moving briefly on from that, because we're both adults. Um, the, the stress test is either 2% above what you're trying to lend or 5.25%, whichever's higher. So that's why a lot of the talk when people were borrowing at like 1.5% and rates are going up and it's crazy and everyone's going to be paying through the roof. These people at 1.5% were already stress tested for rates of 5.25%. and in theory, they can afford them because they pass the stress test. So it just means a reallocation of what you're spending the money on. It's not a case of people are already maxed out at four grand a month and they're now all of a sudden gonna increase to 10 grand a month or, or, or something like that. It's, it's all relative. It's all relative. It's all relative. Yeah. All right. yes. <laughs> What is also relative that if there is a video of us in the West End of you calling this at some point, Al is gonna put it into this video right now. now. The Bank of Canada have already said that they wanna continue raising interest rates and they've actually said that they may not stop at 3%. Before you know it, we could have people arguably stress testing for close to 10%. And if you and didn't just see another video, Ben has yet happy. again lied to try and get one over on me, which has not happy. yet to date happened. Anyway, so that's basically what's going hang on right now. Hang on, hang on. So far with the interest rate predictions this year, you're at the one zero for zero. 
I have never once said that Zero. my crystal ball worked. There we go. But I'm admitting that I have had some forecasts that I have made very public and- They were wrong. They have not turned out to be as accurate as I assumed they would. So all in all, bank lending rate is now 3.75. After reading the, uh, the commentary notes from that, I do believe they will continue to increase. Mm -hmm. Another call I'm gonna make is that they're gonna continue to increase one more time, which is this year, and then we are gonna be flat and only decreasing. I don't know when they're gonna decrease, but we're gonna be flat and only decreasing starting in 2023, no more increases. That is another line I'm gonna put in the sand. Uh, so now, as of today, 3.75 is your overnight. Then we're getting to prime at 5.45 to 5.95. And then we're getting to uh, contract rates, which are if you're getting a discount from the bank as well on that. And then your stress test level. And then the money's out the door. You've got a new home and you are happy. So that's the bulk of it. I also just wanted to touch briefly on the CPI inflation. So the inflation, um, though the rates are still going up, the inflation is coming down, as we said, but only briefly. So we hit a maximum of 8.1, mm -hmm. um, and we are now down to 6.9. So the inflation is obviously CPI, a basket of goods, but not all of those basket of goods are following the trend, which I think we've still got. That's cool CPI, right? Yes. 6.9? So, yeah. So, I think we've got gas still increasing and groceries still increasing. Um, so, I think because those things are still increasing, those uh, the main... Plus 11%. Yeah, this year. They're just not slowing down. Um, the, the, there are still things increasing, which is why the, the, core, the core inflation number is not coming down as quickly as they assumed with these rate hikes. So, it's kind of a bit of a conundrum, if you will. Nothing I couldn't handle if I was at the uh, top, top seat of the Bank of Canada, but unfortunately they turned me down for that job, and I'm here with you at Oakland Realty, downtown Vancouver. Yeah, I think the interesting thing is CPI, or course CPI was supposed to be 6 point, or they were assuming it was going to be 6.7%, so when it came through as 6.9%, it was higher than expected, so everyone was pretty much convinced it was a 0.75%. Uh, hike from the Bank of Canada coming today and considering that and it was only the 0.5 a lot of people call the 0.5 would be extremely risky so it's kind of surprising that it's just the 0.5 I, I wonder if there's been a lot of talk about the Bank of Canada particularly over the last like week from government and Jagmeet Singh came out basically saying they need to slow down or stop their rate increases because doesn't have evidence that it works. Um, but more so is getting at it from a point of you're going to either push us into recession uh, and also just people can't afford it. You know, your rate increases, they don't just have an unlimited spree just to keep going up. So I wonder if that kind of played an effect on it, which I mean, it shouldn't do monetary policy is government's supposed to stay out of it and it's just supposed to be a Bank of Canada thing. But you know the government's involved. Um, and owns it, so. And, um, I forgot what I was going to say. I can't believe I'm blinking. I've done this a million times. Yeah, so it's just uh, surprising that it was just a point oh, five. Yeah, another point to that of, of, a, of a speculative thought I read in the plethora of things this morning was that they think that metrics they're looking at, maybe they are, maybe they are realizing that people are having now kind of extreme affordability issues. And that's a reason why they've kind of lightly pushed forward. Um, again, how much of that they actually care about, what metrics they're actually looking at on the ground, I, I don't know. They say what they say and they do what they do and those things don't always correspond, but yeah, it's still a question mark to a certain degree. I mean, the Bank of Canada is a fighting inflation. That is their role, right? They're trying, well, one of their five roles. But they're trying to keep it at that 2% figure. So it's, they want to bring it down to 2%. They have very limited ways of doing that. And so they're just going to execute those ways. And that's more important to them. Do they care? Well, the chief economist of CIBC said that he believes that 
the Bank of Canada cares more about curbing inflation than it does about pushing us into a recession. If we need to be in a recession, then we need to be in a recession. 100%, and they have their mandates, and one of those is the 2%, and they're, I think they're going to, if a recession just so happens to come, which I believe it will, from all this, then so be it. How bad that recession gets may then reflect more through, again, government influences, but we don't know that yet. But the States is in one, we're not, but we could also pull a, an America, move the goalpost of what a recession actually means at the last minute, and then stay out of one ourselves. So you never know. That's the left for you. You said you want to talk about money supply as well. Uh, no. No, you changed your mind? No. Okay. Not going to talk about money supply. Just that. Touching on the inflation and the rate hike and the structure of the mortgage that you need to put a roof over your little head and that very recently publicly insulted hairpiece you have on there. <clears throat> it's great, it's hair of all time. That's not what she thought in that comment. But! It's too, much, too much Benjamin Mark Robinson for one person to handle, can't blame her. <laughs> but um, I think it's going to be interesting times uh, coming towards the end of the year uh, and early next year. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily agree with you about the rate hikes. I think that they put a forecast out there. Maybe I've already put, put a line there. in the sand. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. The thing is with these measures is they are delayed. Like all of these numbers and these metrics that we go by, they are delayed. CPI is delayed. Um, inflation numbers are delayed. GDP, everything is delayed. So it's not what people are actually seeing here in real time. So they take time to actually come in be effective and actually make the difference. And so that's why they kind of want it to front load. So when we do start seeing those issues, um, they can start decreasing uh, and kind of balance things out. So we just haven't seen that impact really hit yet. Yeah, and speaking of that, the next, uh, the next scheduled date for announcing the overnight rate target is December 7th, 2022. So we will be Go back to that. Merry Christmas, we're out. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. I think that pretty much wraps it up. I think that's it. I was going to do a current events, but I'm not going to. Do a current events? Uh, Are there any current events? Not really. Um, Business in Vancouver did a, a piece that stated the, uh, the Chinese are coming back. The Chinese. <laughs> they want to come back. Um, and they also, in that... But that was uh, based on not real estate sales, but real estate inquiries. So about as useless as anything you could base anything on, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and they also made an interesting point that um, the January 2023, no more foreign buyers for two years. Mm -hmm. Mr. Trudeau's putting his foot down. I would have assumed he would have classed that racist, but I guess not when it's something that helps him. Um, that that will not be... <laughs> uh, uh, a point of concern because like last time um, uh, most of the people the mainland Chinese people that were buying here were Canadians new Canadians so in this push of 400,000 what was it immigrants that we had before immigrants, yeah. uh, they're part of that and there's all levels of wealth or not coming in and they were part of that so they're not going to be touched by this no more foreign buyers because they are new Canadians and they are coming their COVID restrictions are loosened they look at us as a beautiful safe place and the drop in the market is just a benefit in summary they want to come back fantastic next year Okay, and we will see you next week. Don't ever interrupt me again. <laughs> Babylon. I get to the point. The Our point needs to be gotten through. After 10 minutes. The point needs to be gotten through through a gauntlet of information to make it best presented. As we can very quickly remember tell. what the point was in the first place. That's why I jump through the gauntlet and then get to the big point as the final goddamn result.